Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today with something a little bit different. Uh, I, I kind of want to weave these videos into the channel every so often. Uh, I, I want to be a little bit more personal with you guys. My intention here is never to, to bum anybody out or anything like that, but, but honestly, I've been given such a unique and tremendous uh, opportunity to have a platform on the internet. Uh, listen, I can talk to thousands of people with a video like this, and my 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 true goal is that through some of my experiences and being open and transparent with you guys through difficult topics like the one that I want to discuss briefly today, that you know I can help you guys out. If not now. At some point in your life, and I know it won't ap uh, apply to the majority of you guys watching. You know, I know that not everybody watching this video is going to walk away being like, "Wow, that was a tr you know life transforming" or anything like that. Uh, but the one I wanted to start with is we're going to dive right into the deep end, boys and girls, and we're going to start with death because everybody likes to watch death on a gaming channel, don't they? Uh, truthfully, last month, the last couple months, especially the last month has been really uh, difficult on me uh, mentally, uh, just way more than I expected, you know. Now, I lost, when I was four years old, I lost my sister. Uh, when I was 28 years old, I lost my mother. And then uh, six years ago, I lost my brother, uh, Sean. And it's been a obviously incredibly challenging to go through, you know, and it's, it's left me a different person. And anybody who's experienced any sort of loss uh, with a loved one in their life. And this is me and my my mom. If you can, if you couldn't tell, I look a lot like my son uh, Charlie, uh, which I love looking at these old photos. I actually have this one here. I have this one framed in the back here. It says, "Start each day uh, with a grateful heart," and it's this photo, uh, and it's just a good reminder. You know, it's a good reminder of. Uh, to be grateful for the people that you love in life and the people that you have around you. Nothing is ever going to feel perfect and you're going to go through a lot of trials and tribulations in your life, you know, uh, and it's, it's life is, is tough, you know, it's tough. Uh, but it's a reminder to start with a heart of gratitude. And that's something that I really got from my mom. You know, uh, it's something that I took away from that relationship is, is really cultivating this sense of gratitude in, in for the little things in life, right? Because if you don't do that, the little things in life, they'll start to add up and feel like much bigger things than they should, right? So I want to share a few things that, you know, through my losses in life, uh, what kept me going, you know? And, and then first and foremost, I think the biggest thing to recognize, and I have a picture also of me and my bro, this is Sean right there in the middle, as my other brother Nathan as well. Uh, and, uh, Sean was autistic, and I've shared uh, this quite a few times uh, here on the channel, but he was, he, our relationship kind of evolved to where he was more of a, I don't want to say a son or a child to me, but I was more of a caretaker uh, type relationship, and that was especially difficult to lose him. He actually died, obviously, unexpectedly after a grand mal seizure. He, you know, he just, his heart stopped, and it was, uh, it was truly shocking and awful, the worst day of my life, you know? Uh, but, it, it, you know, one thing that you should know if you experience loss, or two things you should know, is that things never, things never go back to the way that they used to be, but they do get easier. They don't get better, they get easier to deal with with time, right? So I think that the, the, the immense grief that you feel after a loss of a loved one initially uh, especially when you go through it for the first time, because we're all going to go through it. You know, we're all, everybody dies, you know, it's, it's part of life, right? We're all dying, uh, every minute and tomorrow is never guaranteed to anybody, you know? Uh, and one thing to, again, is to cultivate that, that gratitude. Otherwise these little things like, you know, I see everybody up in arms about like the time I'm recording this video, uh, Elon Musk just bought Twitter and like everybody in my life seems to be upset on either side, right? About verification and everything like that. And, and, you know, and everybody's so mad and I'm not saying that, you know, that or anything else is not worth getting uh, passionate about, right? It's not, I'm not saying don't have passions, but, but, but what I try to do is, and what this loss has taught me, it's going from somebody who was rarely grateful rarely took inventory of stock about the things that matter, truly matter in, in, in life. And it made me turn to somebody who does take stock and inventory in those things. And also a little bit less anger and hatred, a little bit more understanding and a little bit more perspective 
on what really matters truly in life. I want to share something with you guys. I kind of hesitated sharing this uh, in this video, frankly, because it's 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 a little bit uh, it's a little bit. <sighs> Yeah, well, you guys will see. What is what is this? What am I sharing? Oh, okay. This is this is what I want to share after this. Okay, uh, but this one is it's not going to be for everybody, right? And, and my uh, the last thing I want to do here on the channel is talk religion. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I don't mean this to be any. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm not trying to. It's not about that. I want to share something that gave me great an immense sort of, of peace in the universe. Not necessarily what she's saying, Andrewian, the the wife of Carl Sagan, but I read this, God, after I lost my mom. I, I read this after my mom. And again, it has nothing to do with the, the religious connotations, uh, but it, it's something that to me just so profoundly moved me. You know, it was a realization. So I wanted to share it with you guys because this is the way that got me over the initial grief of my mom and what gives me the power and the strength to kind of persevere after the initial loss of my brother as well. So uh, she says, Andrew, and again, this is a, a uh, I'm not sure if it was a eulogy or if it was like kind of a remembrance, I'm trying to size it up correctly. Sorry, guys, not really editing this video. Uh, but she, she says, when my husband died, because he was so famous, Carl Sagan, a, a, you know, philosopher, an, an author, a uh, entertainer, just a, a really interesting dude, right? Uh, when my husband died because he was famous for not being a believer. He was an atheist as well, right? Many people would come up to me and it still sometimes happened. And they asked me if Carl changed at the end and converted to belief in the afterlife. They also frequently asked me if I think I'll see him again. Uh, Carl faced his death with unflagging courage and never sought refuge in illusions. Again, this is the part that I don't mean to be offensive to anybody. I respect your beliefs and, you know, more power to you, right? But the, the, the more, the underlying message is coming up, right? That I want to share with you guys. The tragedy is that we knew that we would never see each other again. Uh, I don't expect to be reunited with Carl, but the great thing is that we were together for nearly 20 years. We lived with a vivid appreciation of how brief and precious life is. We never trivialized the meaning of death by pretending it was anything other than a final parting. And again, no offense to anybody who has other beliefs, uh, but the overall point is every single moment that we were alive and we were together was miraculous. Not miraculous in the sense of inexplicable, explicable or supernatural. We knew that we were the beneficiaries of chance, that pure chance that could be so generous and so kind that we could find each other, as Carl wrote so beautifully in the cosmos, you know, in the vastness of space and the immensity of time, which is unfathomable, the, the immensity of time, right? Uh, that we could be together for 20 years. That is something which sustains me and is much more meaningful. The way he treated me and the way I treated him the way we took care of each other in our family while he lived, that is so much more important than the idea that I will see him someday. I don't think I'll ever see Carl again, but I saw him. We saw each other. We found each other in the cosmos. And that was wonderful. Again, it's really irrelevant if you think you'll be reunited with loved ones and any of that stuff. I think what this, this left me with, with is this deep sense of this deep sense of gratitude for the time that I did spend and just a recognition that the time that I did spend with those loved ones that I lost along the way, it's still real, you know? Uh, it, it, it's still, it's just as real as, as the present is and the future is, you know? And it's also taught me to live life in a way where I'm truly appreciating the moment you know, things are never going to feel perfect in your life, you know, but ultimately, what do we have other than the moment that we're living in right now? You know, what do we have? You need to appreciate the people in your life, you know, and I wanted to actually share this too, right? And this is something you guys may or may not have seen before. Let me try to get myself a little bit more on camera here. I don't know, I'm not hanging off the screen with you guys. Uh, five most common, uh, life regrets as told by people who are dying. This is heavy stuff. I'll be honest with you. I've never shared this with anybody, uh, except for my therapist, <laughs> but I really, after, you know, so I do YouTube. I also am part owner of a company and, uh, I love what I do. So grateful, you know, but someday, you know, whether that be in 10 or 20 years or whatever, uh, I really, or maybe even in, in a few weeks, I don't know. 
uh, as like a volunteer side thing. I really want to sit with dying people. You know, I took a college class after my mom passed away uh, called, uh, I think it was like coping with, with death or something like that. It was for actually hospice nurses. I was like the only non-nurse and I was the only guy too in the entire class. Uh, but I went there because I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn the feelings. I, what I did when I when I was initially going through the grief of both my brother and my mother's uh, passing, sadly, I don't really remember my, my sister's passing, uh, but I, I really caved in and I really put up these walls. I didn't really even recognize that at the time. At the time, you're just crying and and, and your life feels like it's never going to go on. You have so many emotions that, that go on. Uh, but one thing that I remember is I, I, I put up these massive walls uh, between really everybody in my life. And then it, that created kind of a habit for me to where I always started to put up these walls with everybody. It was really weird. But I mean, there's a reason that I'm 40 and, and single, you know, it's because I, I, I had big issues, still have big issues, uh, letting anybody close to me in life. And it's weird for such an extroverted person, someone who like, if you saw me out and stuff like that, you would never know in a million years that I have these, these problems, you know, uh, but that's what I did. I built all these walls up and now it took me a long time and a lot of therapy to, to, to tear them down a little bit. I'm still not even anywhere close to the, to all the way there, you know, but I would just like be aware of that, uh, for, for you guys, if you ever go through that too, and also recognize that, that again, things will change as much as they seem like they're never going to, there'll be like a line of demarcation in your life to where before your loved one passed away and after, and things will never be the same, but they'll, again, they'll be a little bit easier to deal with. But I've always wanted to sit with dying individuals because I think that uh, for two reasons. Number one is I think there's a, a great sense of uh, of weight, I guess, in a good way, of what goes through somebody's mind, what goes through somebody's head when they're dying. You know, it's the great reckoning of perspective of your life that we'll all get the the opportunity to have at at some point. You know, uh, so these are the five most common life regrets as told by people who are dying. Uh, and I think that these, as a way to kind of end this video too, I've been kind of rambly guys, I apologize. Maybe I ought to take notes or script these videos, but I, sometimes I feel like it's better just kind of, you know, getting a couple reading materials that, that made a pretty big effect on me. And then just after that, not scripting anything and just kind of talking from the heart, you know? Uh, but these five things are something that I learned about in that class uh, for hospice nurses that have really become in a lot of ways a compass for me and how I want to live my life, you know? So I actually learned a lot through my losses uh, and maybe you guys can too. So number one, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life that others expected of me. This is a really big one, man. It's a really big one. Ultimately, we've got this little vessel, our bodies, right? And we have to, listen, that doesn't mean ignore your parents, ignore your loved ones, ignore, take, not take advice from smart people in your life. That's so important. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, your beliefs are your beliefs. You are, are you. You have to take it upon yourself to realize and recognize that you have that autonomy to pave your own way in life, right? Something that took me a while to realize. I wish I didn't work so hard. Oof. This one really hits. This one really hits for me. I uh, I worked way too hard. And that was an escape for me after the loss of, of my loved ones. I worked all the time. I've talked about this in previous videos. But, you know, I don't know if the relationship with my child's uh, mother was repairable. You know, uh, she's a great person. She's a great mom. And uh, we get along great, you know. But I also didn't do anybody any favors by working like 80 hours a week, you know. Uh, I buried myself in work and I really regret that. You know, I, I, it, it's not like, it's not necessarily about that relationship per se. It's just about, I, life isn't about work ultimately, you know, uh, it's fine to be passionate. It's fine to be ambitious. It's fine to have a great work ethic, have a great work environment. But if it, it becomes all encompassing in your life, you're going to be one of these people on your deathbed thinking, I wish I didn't work so hard, you know? I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. It's another big one, right? I mean, there's so many tough feelings that we express. And this, in a way, me making this YouTube video that makes no sense on this channel, 
is a way for me to have the courage to express my feelings, you know? Like, this is what I'm doing with you guys right now. Uh, it's kind of an uncomfortable video to make in a lot of ways, you know? It's weird stuff to talk about, you know? And I know there's a lot of, you know, kids and families who watch my channel too, so I want to be respectful of that as well. But not to be, like, super cheesy about it, but I always think back to Fred Rogers, like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and I remember he had all these difficult conversations with children about death, about divorce, about life, about sadness, about, you know, grief. And I always like, yeah, as a kid, I watched like Mr. Rogers. I'm sure half of you are too young to even know what that is. But it's just like that taught me something. And, and like nothing against my parents at all. But I wish they had had these sort of conversations in a tactful way with me as a child. Because I was always scared of everything, man. My life was dominated by fear in a lot of ways it still is, you know? Uh, but I think that to get over that fear, you have to have the courage to express your feelings, especially your loved ones, you know, even if it's not easy. Number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Another one that hits home for me, man. I keep in touch with zero people from high school, zero. Uh, I keep in touch with zero people that I was friends with after high school, like college age, zero. Uh, as I told you guys, I built these walls. I isolated myself, you know, I had this one friend, Josh, who was like a best friend to me for so long. And he's reached out to me over the years. You know, I've even reached out to him over the years, but then I just kind of ghosted him, you know, and it's, it's because of all these walls that I put up in my life. You know, I just, I, I don't know why my family too, you know, my mom's family after she passed away for whatever reason, I just, uh, I stopped communicating with them, you know, and I don't know why I did it. It's not because I didn't like them or my friend or anything like that. It's just because I started to be comfortable with being isolated, you know, and I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends and I'm trying, but honestly, out of these five things, this is the biggest one that I still struggle with, you know, for, for someone to be in my life now, for me, like to someone to be a really close friend to me. It's sad to say, but they have to do most of the work on most occasions, maybe like one or two exceptions, but they have to do the heavy lifting because I'm not proactive enough to be that person to many people who aren't very proactive with me, you know? The last one is I wish I let myself be happier, you know? Happiness is a choice, right? And this is the biggest thing I want to leave you guys with. I'll wrap. It's almost 20 minutes. Good God. Uh, happiness is a choice, you know? It's... uh. No matter, it's a choice for me, despite all my loss and everything I've been through. And I know a lot of you guys have been through a lot in life, right? But ultimately, you know, to, to misquote Marcus Aurelius, life isn't what happens to you. It's how you react to what happens to you. That's your life. So you can choose. I mean, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl is a great read. I highly recommend it. You can read that. And, and even, and it, I feel almost taboo talking about this personally, but uh, even in concentration camps, people were able to find meaning, you know, Jewish people in concentration camps, where Viktor Frankl was as well while he was writing this, they were able to find meaning and even moments of happiness, you know, uh, because they were, again, deciding how they just, how they wanted to react to the world around them. Again, probably bad for me to try to paraphrase that. But I think the overall point is you can look at some people out there with what, what looks like nothing in terms of material wealth, but they still are happy. Some of those people, right? I'm always, always envious of those people personally, right? I always wanted, I was always ambitious. I always wanted the next thing, the next thing after that, the next thing after that. But what I've learned through my loss personally in dealing with death in my life is happiness is a choice. It would be easy for me after losing three of my family members to just fall in a hole of despair, you know, to turn to addiction, to turn to um, pleasure addiction, you know, to just go in excess on everything. And although I'm not going to lie, I've dabbled in excess of things in life. I've, I, it didn't bring me happiness, you know, happiness is a choice. It's a day-to-day -day choice. A lot of happiness can come from just being more disciplined, not you know, being Epicurean and going all out in pleasures, right? But rather being more stoic, uh, not always screaming out your hardships, you know? 
like I'm doing here. Uh, but rather being a little bit more, you know, uh, thoughtful about how you, how you go through these emotions. And one of those emotions is happiness. It's not normal and it's not okay to be happy all the time. It's certainly not expected to be happy after the death of a loved one. Not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you should always be aware that it's okay to be happy. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to be sad too, you know? It's okay to grieve. But you can allow yourself, especially if you're going through something right now, you can allow yourself to be happy because that's the best thing for you eventually when you're ready, you know? So you don't have to feel guilty about that. You also don't have to feel guilty about being sad. That's something I learned too. I feel guilty making videos like this sometimes because it's like, ah, oh, here goes, here goes Ash. Another 20 minute video about deaths in his family, you know? Like, dude, it's been years and years. Get over it, man. You know, I don't think many people think that. If you do, you're probably not someone I want to be a friend of mine or anything like that or a viewer of my channel. But I have those voices in the back of my head talking about loved ones. You know, like, oh, really? You're still talking about loved ones? You know, you're still posting on Twitter about loved ones on the anniversary of their deaths? Yeah, I, I, I freaking am because that's who I am, you know? And I want to scream my brother Sean my sister Colleen and my mother Kristen's names from the rooftops because they lived and they were here. And to quote Carl Sagan or Andrewian about Carl Sagan, we, I appreciate the odds, the infinitesimal odds that I had the family that I did. And I was grateful enough to have those relationships that I did in the cosmos and that we even exist that I'm even freaking recording this video, you know, is perspective in life sometimes that really matters. I hope this helped one or two of you guys. I love you, especially for going through something, sending massive love your way. Appreciate you guys. And as always, take care, guys.